You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Oh, boy! We're talking about the ratio and the root test. Both of these suggest that we should look at the geometric. What are we even talking about? Oh my God, why are you bringing this up? Well, I'm bringing up why these might be in the same section of your book. What do we mean? We have this geometric. I changed the A to a D. Why? So that you don't get to confuse later. What do we have? We have the geometric series. Yeah. It converges when? Yeah. R is smaller than 1. That's the common ratio, and this is what I'm trying to get out of this. What are we talking about? We have this converges to that when R is smaller than that, but when you're looking at some geometric and it's all loose terms, then how do you find the common ratio? Well, you find the common ratio when you look at the term that you're going to divided by the term that you're at. Or you look at the term that you're at divided by the term before that. Well, so I can take this and divide it by that. Uh-huh. I can take this and divide it by that. Uh-huh. I can take any of those and divide it by the one before it, and it's going to be the common ratio. All right. So that's the ratio in common from term to term. So, okay, then when, whoa, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa, that ratio test, yeah. Suppose that the series, it's any series. Also suppose that the limit as n goes to infinity of, oh, look at that. What are you doing? You're checking to see whether or not the terms are geometric enough. All right, now, and when we're talking about geometric enough, we are talking about in the tail. That's right. You're checking out the tail. Sure. There's that meme, dude, girl, looking like this. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the end of the series. Oh, boy. That's right. So what? What are you looking at? What the f*** are you looking at? You're looking to see whether or not the terms are eventually geometric enough. Yeah. All right. When does the geometric converge? When the common ratio is less than one. Uh -huh. When does the geometric diverge? When the common ratio is bigger than one. Oh, is that all this is? That's all this is. But what's this biz? Well, if, if the common ratio is one, then that test is inconclusive. When do you want to use the ratio test? Any of these in the playlist collection? Yeah, all right, cool. At the end of this video, there's a playlist. Click it, watch them in order. Good stuff. All right, so in the playlist, you'll see you're gonna wanna use the ratio test on anything that has factorials. Anything with factorials. Also, another good place to use it is on these um, exponential functions. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, 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 okay. That one is also in the private collection. Now, if you come over to the other one that is in this section, yeah, they call it the root test. All right, so this root test, what is it? They're like, say you have a series and suppose that you're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the sequence, the underlying sequence, these have absolute values, so they're going to converge, or, they're going to converge absolutely, or diverge absolutely, that's not even actually a thing, diverge is just diverge. There's different levels of convergence. All right, we'll get to that ish. Okay, so what? If we took the exponent, when do you want to use this? When you have exponents. When do you want to use this? When you have exponents. When do you want to use this? When you have variable exponents. When do you want to use this? When you have variable exponents. What does that do? It takes the variable exponent off and come with me. Come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, all right, so what does it do? It takes the variable off of it and it looks at the sequence and it checks to see if the sequence is geometric enough. Oh my gosh, come on, come on, back on over here. All right, so it takes the exponent off. That's what the root does. It rids you of the root and left with the radicand, man. And then that's going to be your basic sequence. Your sequence is so basic. Oh, man, we can't even trust you. we got to come over here because, wait, you're, you're way over here. I need you over here. I need you over. Okay, stay right there. 
Stay right there. Perfect. Don't move. So when we take the exponent off is the ratio geometric enough? That's what it's asking. All right. If it's less than one, why? That's when the geometric converges. If the base, the ratio is less than one, then it converges absolutely. They put the absolute value on that one so that we don't have to continue to say, let a n be a positive sequence. Now, if we slap the absolute values on it, we can check for absolute convergence. It's gonna get there, but if that ratio is not geometric enough, then the series is gonna diverge. All right. And um, if, uh, whew, inconclusive, when do you want to use it? Hey, you were supposed to stay over here. All right, we're going to have to, oh, okay. You're going to want to use it when you have exponents. All right, come on, 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 come on. There you go. Over here. Absolute convergence. I'm going to mention it here because it's in your book in this part. Why? Because uh, they slap the absolute values on it, I guess. A series converges absolutely if you slap the absolute values on it and it converges. Absolute convergence is literally with the absolute values. It takes out positive and negative and it is a stronger kind of convergence. We're going to talk about a conditional convergence when we get to alternating, which is the next section. But for now, what do we have? If the absolute, the sum of the absolute values converges, then it converges. It is a stronger thing. There will be a lesser thing. And now we're going to talk about that lesser thing. But for ratio test and root test, what's the best way to do it? Well, you just saw this. Hit that playlist, watch them in order, and we're good.